So I hope that uh, Tuesday went okay uh, with the factoring. I hope you uh, understood it okay and were able to make some gains um, with regards to factoring. Today I want to build on that by ref by returning back to a previous concept. I am really excited to get into new stuff on Monday. So bear with me, we have one more day uh, without me there. So um, I want to review uh, holes and asymptotes and uh, um, yeah, holes and asymptotes and, and sort of function behavior um, and how that relates to factoring. So uh, let's start with a function such as 3x squared plus 10x. I would encourage you as I'm working these problems out, um, have a notebook out right now, get your notebook out, taking notes with me. Um, let me give you some vocab. Um, it's my first time using this app, so just bear with me. I'm still trying to figure out exactly how it works. Okay, so <clears throat> I have a function here. 3x squared plus 10x plus 8 over x squared minus 4. Just a little bit of like um, housekeeping, I guess you can say. This is called, right here, this this whole thing is called a rational function. Okay, just, just so you know that term, I suppose. So when I talk about rational functions, you know that means, okay, that that's one function divided by another. It's so like good definition. I would write that down. Rational function. Okay. Um, so this in its current form doesn't help us. So a lot of what we do in calculus is what's called algebraic manipulation. And so you're changing the way that an expression looks so that you can do something or you can learn more about it. And one way that we are manipulating currently, uh, that which we've been working on this week, is factoring, right? Factoring is algebraic manipulation. We are writing the same expression, but differently. So let's start by doing that. So before I do it, I want to challenge you to do it. So because you should have been practicing this. Go ahead. I want you to factor whatever you can, top or bottom of this expression. Pause the video now, go ahead and try it. Okay, we're back. Um, so, based on what I taught you on Tuesday on the video, with this top expression, 3x squared, I'm starting with this, 3x squared plus 10x plus eight, you would first try and take a common factor out of it because of that three in the beginning, right? Um, but since the 3, 10, and the 8, they, none of them share a, um, a common factor. We can't do that. So, And because of that 3 in the beginning, we cannot do the traditional x method, right? That this method right here, uh, I mean, like, that's, this is not going to work. You cannot do this, okay? So <laughs> I'm not trying to show that. Okay, so let's go back to this. 3x squared plus 10x plus 8. If you watch my video from last time, you'll know that we can sort of start factoring this just based on that three. The three x squared, there's only one way to get it. It's three x and x. And you can also set up your signs. I know it's gonna be a two plus signs because right here we have a plus and right here we have a plus. So these two must be pluses as well, okay? And then the next thing you're looking for is two numbers that multiply to get the eight, but they need to add uh, to get the 10. So I'm looking, two numbers multiply to get eight, add to get the 10, but one of those two numbers is gonna be multiplied by the three. So that's why we can't do that X method. Um, so instead what we do, uh, what I do, different ways of doing it, but this is what I do, is I draw out the box. I know that this is, has to be a three X, this has to be an X, this is definitely gonna be three X squared. I know this has to be an eight. Um, and then I, what I might do when I was learning this, what I would definitely do would be learn, write out the factors of eight. So we have basically one and eight, and two and four. And then I'm gonna test those. And basically the more you do this, the better you get at it. So I can, I can identify what, what the answer is now, but that's only because I've done it so much. So you just have to do it more. The more you do it, the better you get at it. Um, so you might try, okay, how about the one and the eight? Well, 
that's not going to work because I either have one times three, which is three plus the eight is 11. That's not going to work. Or I have eight times three, 24 plus the one, 25. That doesn't add to eight, 10. So that's out. Okay, those are out. Uh, how about the two and the four? Well, I can either do four times three is 12 plus the two is 14, not going to work. Or I can do two times three, six plus the four is 10. Yeah, yes, that does work. So x uh, plus the two here will get me six x. And three x plus the four will get me four x together with the six and the four that gets me to 10. And they both multiply to 8, therefore my factors must be 3x plus uh, 4 and x plus 2. So I'm going to write those up here. 3x plus 4, x plus 2. Um, the bottom one, this one here, this is a common uh, expression you'll see called a difference of squares. Because it doesn't have that linear expression in there, you're looking for two two values that multiply to get negative four and add to get zero, which are plus two and negative two. Okay. So this is what we end up with. This is factored form. So I hope you were able to get some of that or most of that by factoring. Um, and then the next question is, so how does this help us? Well, you're gonna be you're gonna come across problems where they ask you what are the holes, vertical asymptotes of a function? Um, so just a review, uh, the VAs, the vertical asymptotes, I'm just gonna write VA, are zeros only, I wanna emphasize, I'm not trying to highlight that if I can. I'm getting that bigger maybe. Only, in denominator, denominator. Sorry, I've used my finger for this, so it's a little challenging. So zero is only denominator. What does that mean, a zero only denominator? Well, if we look back at our um, expression, zeros are values that give us zero, right? So in the denominator, I have these two factors, x plus two and x minus two. The zero right here is x equals negative two because when I put in negative two into this I get zero and over here the zero is x equals two okay I have two zeros now a VA a vertical asymptote is a zero only in the denominator so the plus two the plus two happens both in the denominator and the numerator that's not only in the numerator right that's that's in both so that's not a VA but what is a VA is the uh, the x minus two. This is a VA. Okay, so we would say here we have a VA at a vertical asymptote at x equals two. Okay, um, that's VA. Make sense? Now holes or a hole is a zero both in den and num denominator and numerator okay i'm shortening it um holes is there both both in denominator and numerator so that's what i was saying here this this is a hole because it's in both. And then this would be a, um, a VA because it's only in the bottom. Okay. So we were, we're going to have a hole at uh, negative two, right? Negative two. Remember, it's not the two, it's the value that creates a zero. So it's, the, it's this right here. Okay. That is the, I'm going to try to color code this a little better. That is the, the hole. So um, in this case, we're going to have a hole at uh, 2, comma. The thing is, a vertical asymptote, right, visually, 
is a straight line, a uh, straight vertical line, like that's going to look like this. You can imagine that. So it's just going to be like an x value, x equals 2, x equals negative 3, whatever. But a hole is a specific coordinate. It should have both an x and a y, right? So if you can see here, I have my x value is 2. How do I get my y value? Well, what you have to do, I'm actually going to rewrite the expression down below. So it's 3x plus 4. X, uh, x plus 2. Just a, I, I made some, in some place here, I made a little mistake. It's at negative 2, uh, the whole, because of this negative 2 right here. So just, just for the reference. Okay. Um, x plus 2 over, and I'm just going to rearrange them just to make it clear, x minus 2, x plus 2. And this is our hole here, right? So to find the y value of the hole, you're actually going to cancel out your hole. You're going to cancel out the elements of the expression. And you're going to plug in this x value into what remains of your expression. So it's going to go in for x here and here. Does that make sense? So you go back to your expression, you cancel out the hole, and then you plug in the x value to what you have remaining. So what you have is... 3 times negative 2 plus 4 over negative 2 minus 2. That's negative. Six plus four is negative two over negative four. That's one half. So our whole is at uh, negative two comma one half. Okay, so I want to I want you to practice this. So identifying do you do this with delta right now? Do the whole and delta the whole and vertical as of delta now. Thank you.